In March 2019, I posted my first Civil War warning video on YouTube. So it's it's been almost two years. Uh, at that time, I think I had four subscribers. The the video was shot with a 920 Logitech 920 webcam. It was, it was production wise, it was pretty bad. It wasn't even edited. It was just streamed up. And what I thought I'd do with this video is because I, you know, I had four subscribers then. I have I'm pushing 140 now. And it's probably a lot of people maybe have never seen it. And I thought what I would do is update it, upgrade it as well, since things are production values are a little bit better now than they were then. But also add to it because a lot's happened since then. A lot's happened in the, in the last uh, two months. A lot's, a lot's happened in the last two weeks. And I'm going to do that at the end. And, you know, what what's changed? Things better, worse? whatever. And that, that's what I wanted to do with this video. My argument in the video two years ago was that this country is more divided today than we were in 1861 at the start of the Civil War. What I argued was that if you look at American society at the time of the American Civil War, what divided us? Slavery. Slavery was this huge issue. It was a political issue. It was a moral issue. It was a religious issue. You name it. It was a big issue. It was the cause of a civil war. I'm not one of those people who think it was about tariffs or states' rights. I mean, tariffs, no way. We would have gone to civil war over tariffs. States' rights, well, the state right involved was slavery. So it, it's still all related to slavery. And slavery clearly divided the North and South. But if you look at Northern and Southern societies at the time, think about all the things that united them. Whether you were a Northerner or a Southerner, you were probably white. You were most likely a Christian. You believed in the founding of the United States. You believed that the founders were good men, smart men, intelligent men, wise men. Heroes. You believed in Republican government. You believed in capitalism, market capitalism as an economic system. If you look at political philosophy writ large, there was basic agreement. Economic policy writ large, you know, they were reading the same economists coming out of the Enlightenment. Moral philosophy, pretty much the same. They read the same literature. They read Shakespeare. They read other things in the North and South. It didn't matter. They went to the same plays. If you look at basically anything, there was general agreement between North and South. They shared the same culture. They shared the same values, except, and this is a big exception, of course, for slavery. If you look at the country today, what do you find? What do you see? Is there an issue comparable to slavery? Somewhat, I would say. Abortion. I think it's a pretty big issue that divides left and right in this nation. And it's seen, as was slavery, an issue not just political importance, of moral importance, religious importance. Now, you could argue maybe it's not as divisive as slavery, and I don't think it is, but it's still a huge divisive issue. But what unites people left and right in this country? Almost nothing. If, if you look at the things that united Northerners and Southerners in 1861, despite the fact that they were involved in this growing, expanding, bloody civil war. You know, we're not mostly whole white anymore. We're not, Christianity doesn't unite us anymore. Philosophy doesn't unite us anymore. Belief in the founding and the founders doesn't unite us anymore. You know, Jefferson's no longer a hero. He's a slave-holding scumbag. Same with Washington. Same with the others. 
God, even Abraham Lincoln statues are being pulled down. Ulysses S. Grant, the people who ended slavery, the Democrats ended slavery, people like Republicans, Lincoln and Grant ended slavery, and their statues are being pulled down. Their legacies are being destroyed while the Democrats take control of the country. Think about that. Literature doesn't unite us anymore. You know, I used to teach on a college campus. I was chair of an English department for two years. There are a lot of people who don't want to have anything to do with Shakespeare. He's just an old white guy. They want a new canon, you know, with people of color and their plays and their, their novels and things like that. So that doesn't unite us anymore. Basically, all the things that united people back in 1861, other than it, where, despite slavery, no longer do. They just don't anymore. And that's why two years ago, even four years before, I, four years ago, before I was on YouTube, I was warning that we we're headed towards civil war. It's not that I saw specific moves or things happening. It's just when you look at, knowing what I do, I teach American history, I teach about the Civil War, and knowing what divided the country in 1861, and looking at the country in 2016, 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, and you can't find any compensating elements of unity that you had during our last Civil War. That's why I've often said the only thing that's holding us together today is inertia, and habit. If it wasn't for inertia and habit, we wouldn't be one people. We're not one people anymore. We've gone from, you know, e pluribus unum, you know, the, the many to the one, thanks to progressive policies, we've now become the pluribus. We're no longer the unum. We are the pluribus. And without that, without that concept of Americanism holding us together, there's no reason for us to still be together. There's no reason for the United States to be a nation. It's been destroyed. It doesn't exist anymore. This leads me to the other thing I wanted to talk about, which wasn't in the original video. What's happened over the last two years? Well, the first question you know, normally one would ask is, what's happened that would make you think you, you got it wrong? Well, nothing. From what I've considered, all I've seen over the last two years since I recorded that video and posted it up there are things that reinforce the arguments I've made. I haven't seen anything that would suggest that my warning was uh, you know, some sort of weird conspiracy theory or something. In fact, after watching what happened in Washington last Wednesday when, with the uh, protesters, the mob, whatever, however you care to term them, storming into the capital of the United States, you know, where Congress sits. To me, setting aside what was happening or why or whose fault it was, it's just another sign of movement towards civil war. You know, if you work from my assumption, we're headed towards civil war, what happened in D.C., a week ago, I'm recording this on Tuesday, I think it's the 12th of January or whatever the date is. I could have a date wrong. I retired. I lose track of time and days anymore. But if you look at that within the context of what I've been arguing, warning about for the last four years, last two years on YouTube, it makes perfect sense. This is what I would expect to see. And you're going to, we're probably going to see more of it. If you look at the situation today in terms of what unifies us and what divides us, and I basically said then that you know, hardly anything unified us anymore, I would say it's become evident to me since November, since the election, especially over the last couple of weeks, that even less divides us. There used to be some level of unity around the concept concepts embodied in the First Amendment. But if you look at what's happened in the last year, they're all being destroyed. Freedom of religion, freedom of, of gathering and pro peaceable protest. No, those freedoms are no longer 
guaranteed by the Constitution. Worse yet, if they're not being guaranteed, they're being selectively exercised. In other words, you can protest as a person of conscience in response to the killing of George Floyd. Okay, that's fine. But if you want to go to church as an exercise of your conscience, you couldn't. They were closing the churches. Now, there have been court cases that have somewhat resolved that, but not entirely. And if they pack the Supreme Court, you know, that's not even going to happen. You won't even get the support of the court if the Democrats pack the Supreme Court, as I assume they will do once they get into power. It's, I think it, it should be, it, from their point of view, it should be the first thing that they, they go about doing. So freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, it's gone out with it. You know, look at the response to what happened in the Capitol Wednesday. You know, it's wrong to go into Congress. It's wrong to do this. But it's fine to besiege a federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon for weeks. That's okay. That's a mostly peaceful protest. Now, I don't, I don't see anybody saying what happened in Washington last Wednesday was a mostly peaceful protest, which it was. Most of the people did not get into Congress. There wouldn't have been enough room for them. Again, I'm not, I don't mean to excuse what the, the mob that went into Congress proper did. That was wrong. They should be prosecuted. And many of them will be because they're all on, they're all on video. Some of the video they shot and posted themselves. But if you look at that element of the First Amendment, that's gone over the last year. Freedom of the press. You have calls to shut down Fox News and to shut down other right-leaning media outlets. And these calls are coming from the media. You know, you got people on CNN saying Fox News should be shut down. What happened to the press sticking together? What happened to the, the right-wing press supporting the left-wing press, you know, on principle? Pentagon Papers case, something like that. Gone. Let's pile on. Let's get rid of our competition. And that's where we're at today. That's why everything I said two years ago, everything I said four years ago about the threat of a coming civil war is even more real today. It's more present today. It's more alive today. We're seeing it now. It's not just a hypothetical that we're talking about anymore. It's actually happening. You can turn on your TV and you can see elements of civil war occurring. You can see the Reichstag equivalent. You can see the Reichstag Hitlerian response equivalent. And all this is taking place. So all the things that divided us before are still there. The First Amendment has now become a divisive issue. All the elements of it, press, assembly, religion, are all now dividing us. And my guess is, Next on the list will be the Second Amendment. The Fourth Amendment is pretty much all gone already. So it's like one by one, progressives are, you know, checking off the boxes on the Bill of Rights. Closing down dissent. Shutting things down. I had 10,000 followers on Twitter, which isn't a huge amount compared to, but it's well above the average. The average is probably in the hundreds. Just since the election with the purges people talk about on Twitter, I've lost 10% of that. I've lost about 1,000 followers. Counts suspended, disappeared. You lose a follower. 1,000 people, 10%. I mean, I've been on Twitter for years to, just to get up to 10,000. And, and just like that, boom, I'm down to, you know, I'm pushing 9,000. And no matter what I do, it just keeps dropping. And it's because, you know, I have a program I can get in, I can look, suspended accounts, suspended accounts, suspended accounts, suspended accounts. They're purging people on Twitter. A lot of people, not just big names. You hear about Trump and you hear about uh, this lawyer or this politician or this person or that person. You're talking about little people on Twitter are getting knocked off. I know people on Facebook. Small people, you know, handful of, of uh, 
Facebook friends, gone. I know them personally. This is what's happening. It's a purge going on. And Biden's not even in office yet. Trump's still there. What do you think is going to happen when they actually get in? What's going to happen when they take over the Senate? What's going to happen after they pack the court? So looking at the perspective of my Civil War video not quite two years ago, everything I said then is still true. And a lot more makes me worry today. There's been further erosion, further division. There really, as I said before, there's nothing that holds this country together right now but inertia and habit. And that's not enough. That's not going to last. The question will be, what's the spark that sets off the conflagration? That's all we're waiting for, the spark. Maybe it's already smoldering out there. I can't see everything but we'll know soon enough, unfortunately. You know, this wasn't a prediction when I said we were headed toward civil war. It was a warning. It's not somewhere, you know, I don't want to end my life watching this country torn apart by civil war. That's like the, the last thing I wanted to see. That's why I thought this would be a warning. Maybe people would, but I think it's too late now. More and more people... I did a video a couple months ago. Two thirds of people in the United States think we're headed towards civil war. When I recorded the video the first time two years ago, it was one third. That's what sparked the video. I found a poll. A third of Americans think we're headed towards civil war. Oh my God. Now it's over 60%. And that poll was taken months before the election. God knows if they took a poll today, what would it be? 75, 80? 90% think we're headed towards civil war. But nobody's talking about it. They're talking about shutting down Parler. They're talking about, you know, kicking my friend off Facebook. They're talking about, you know, getting rid of my followers on Twitter. <laughs> Little people who, who are just disappearing. You know, the digital black Mariah of the Stalinist era drives up and throws their account in and, and takes, them, takes them somewhere to the digital gulag where they... They're, they're, they disappear. That's where we're at. And it's not getting any better. It's only getting worse. That's my view. Leave yours in a comment. You can't subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know when I post new videos, share the video with your friends, give it a thumbs up. And until the next time, keep fighting.